that's not quite what I'm after. Good morning, sir. Join the Rolex waitlist now! Uh, sorry, I'm looking for something I can buy today, really? Uh, something a bit more minimalist? Ah, yes, sir. We have the perfect affordable luxury options for you right here. And those are decent quality, yeah? <laughs> of course, sir. Why would I lie to you? Uh, uh, can I try that one? Absolutely. Feel free to try it on. Cheers. Whoa! Before you reach for that Daniel Wellington or Movement Watch, lend me your ear for a second. You see, I reckon you've been had on, at least a little. From my experience, most of these fashion watches aren't what they're cracked up to be. Brands like Daniel Wellington and MVMT use the guise of minimalism and aggressive influencer marketing campaigns to sell you generic, poorly made pieces that you can often buy for far less on Chinese wholesale sites like AliExpress. The near $500 Daniel Wellington Automatic I reviewed the other week was one of the worst offenders, with components and aesthetics worse than the $150 Orient Bambino. These new age fashion watch companies would have you believe that those brands are the only alternatives to luxury watches that retail for thousands. In reality, many higher quality brands offer more attractive Bauhaus inspired designs at fairer prices and with less marketing fluff. You just don't know about them yet, as they haven't been rammed down your throat by z list celebrities. Well, after this video, I guess you will know about them. I've shortlisted all the best options. Some of these watches were provided at my request by certain brands for this video or for previous or future videos on this channel. For your convenience, all the watches I mentioned in today are affiliate linked in the video video description. I'll work my way from the generally most affordable brands through to the most expensive on the list, though prices are subject to change. Thanks, inflation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the smug feeling of avoiding buyer's remorse. So the cheapest options. These typically come in the form of generic Chinese made watches that are roughly equivalent to Daniel Wellington and Movement, but for a fraction of the cost. Two such brands are Bure, B -B Burai, and another one called Kronos. Though these private labeled watches often sell under other brand names, but sometimes you can save more by buying directly from China through the likes of AliExpress. Most of these pieces are nothing special and look very formulaic, but most fashion watches are guilty of these shortcomings anyway, so these are a much more logical purchase. Usually tied with DW and movement in terms of performance, they're consequently the worst quality on this list. So make sure you stick around for some more impressive alternatives. A German brand inherently tied to German design is Braun. Yes, these are marketed as Braun in the UK, so that's how I'll be pronouncing it, even though it technically should be brown. Their watch and clock team has historically been headed by world famous designers such as Dieter Rams and Dietrich Lubbs, who specialized in proportional geometry and the golden ratio, two principles at the core of the Bauhaus movement. It's often claimed that Apple's design team copied multiple brawn designs because they were so impressive. And when you see the photos, it's not hard to see why. Undoubtedly, some of their watches are incredibly attractive, but the quest for impressive visuals can cause issues. One of the models I previously reviewed looked fantastic, but had a flawed lug design that, when combined with the stiff bracelet, rendered the watch basically unwearable for the vast majority of wrist sizes. As such, I'd recommend avoiding the specific models that you can see on screen now. All of those ones seem to share that same problematic lug shape. Instead, I'll go through the few that are worth looking at right after this message from our partners at Watch Crunch. It's the online community for watch lovers like me and you. Watch Crunch was built by watch nerds who grew tired of the flex culture on most social media platforms. They wanted to create something more engaging and informative to bring the community together rather than segregate it. Unlike like most groups or online forums, WatchCrunch has a slick, easy to use interface which allows you to access a huge variety of content in a matter of seconds. You'll find everything from pictures and videos to reviews, articles, polls and more. They've even added the unique meetup feature where you can host or attend meetups with other watch lovers at the click of a button. If you're on the hunt for a new watch, then the news tab or what are you wearing sections will be your best friend. You can browse all the latest releases and then see what others choose to wear each day to help you find the perfect piece. Unlike other sites, they're not all diamond encrusted Rolexes either. In fact, for specific subjects and brands, try the hashtags feature, where content is filtered to your preferences and taste. No more seeing brands that you just don't care about, or in my case, brands you can't afford. If my video doesn't serve up the piece you're after, I've added a post onto WatchCrunch asking the community there for suggestions, so you can browse through the comments there for more minimalist options when you're done here. Did I mention it's free? You can sign up right now using the link in the video description. First up, there 
are the BN0020 series of affordable quartz watches. These offer a comparable aesthetic to some of these minimalist fashion brands, only are slightly better executed and come with a lug-free design, including straps that slot into rear cutouts. It's strange that such subtle differences can make an item look much more pleasant, as on the surface, these aren't far from the infamous brands I've roasted before. They've got run-of-the-mill 360NL steel cases, mineral crystals, and Japanese quartz movements, all of which are commonplace elsewhere. The straps are slightly better, despite lacking quick-release pins, and the water resistance is also 5-bar versus the 3-bar splash-proof rating you'll find on most fashion watches. Outside of those changes and the more refined looks, the main differentiator is price. These brawn watches are typically far less expensive than most comparably spec fashion watches, often available for around the 50 pound or $60 mark when on sale. At that price, these are a decent deal. The BN0020 range is 37.8 millimeters wide and has a moderate 8.5 millimeter thickness. For something larger, it might be worth looking at the 42 millimeter BN0172, which is identical outside of some minor cosmetic alterations. Compared to the likes of Orient, which I'll be mentioning later, all of these brawns are a bit less formal and they tend to target everyday usage. The main thing to note with the BN0020 series is that the straps are pretty long so they're ill-suited to the smallest wrists out there. If you've got skinny arms like me, you'll likely need to change the strap. If you're not feeling that one, you can opt for the BN0030 series, which is the same one I looked at back in 2019. That one is a bit more unique than the other Braun Quartz options, with a raised chapter ring and square integrated lug style that helps it look a little different. It clocks in with a 40mm case, comparable to many DWs. It otherwise has the same performance and strap type as the previous Braun watches, though if I recall correctly, the strap is a fair amount shorter. Either that or I've lost a lot more weight than I thought. If you're super broke, Braun recently released a dirt cheap minimalist watch with a brass case, which sometimes comes bundled with an alarm clock for an incredibly low price. Despite the inferior material, I'd say it's a fair deal considering the cost, and it could make for a tremendous affordable gift for someone. They're normally available for even less than the Timex Fairfield that I'll be mentioning later in this video. If you do have some extra pennies lying around, then Braun has got a concept watch that you might want to try. The first one is made of ceramic, and it's the BN0171. Oddly, retailers can't agree on what gender this one is directed towards, though Braun lists it as unisex, which makes sense given the versatile 38mm size. The rest of the measurements are identical to those other lugless Braun watches I just mentioned, though the dial here is the same ultra-minimalist one found on the larger BN0172. I purchased this version a while back for my upcoming case material scratch test, as I'm curious to see how this ceramic compares to regular materials like steel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one. What I will say is it feels much better than the whole bio-ceramic thing used by Swatch, so I'm quite interested to see the results really. It's also available in grey and white, as well as this subdued navy tone. The bracelet is good quality too, but it utilises a butterfly clasp with no micro adjustment holes, meaning only link size changes are possible, potentially leaving you with an imperfect fit without a strap change. This ceramic watch does feel better than the steel brawn watches, but is usually much more expensive and it lacks a crystal upgrade. It's still only mineral. I think the viability of this watch depends on the price you can get it at, which often varies wildly, as well as how well that ceramic performs in the scratch tests. Over the years, I've also tried some of the more widely known Braun watches. That includes the semi-famous AW10 and AW50. Unlike the others, which are made in China, these two are made in Germany, all by a company called Xeon Limited, as far as I'm aware. While they say made in Germany, turns out both watches actually use Swiss Ronda Quartz movements. These are decent and tend to have a more consistent lower recoil tick than cheaper Miyota Quartz automatics, meaning that models that use a typical long second hand tend to have better alignment with the markers, just due to less variation between each tick. Still, the inclusion of this movement means they aren't entirely German made, as that statement may have had you believe. They are at least wafer thin, at 7mm and 6.6mm respectively meaning they sit about as flush as wristwatches get. Luckily, they aren't huge either, so they don't overhang your wrist in pancake-like fashion. The diminutive 2.4mm lugs give them an even slimmer appearance from side on. So if you want a watch that basically disappears under any cuff, these are an obvious choice. The AW models are nothing special in terms of specifications, with a comparable stainless steel case, the same mineral crystal, and inferior water resistance than the lower-end models. Fortunately, the straps are better than the cheaper Braun models. I was a little concerned in my AW50 that this might not last particularly well, though I've recently tried the AW10 and wore it for a much longer period of time, and the strap has lasted far better than I anticipated. On wrist, it really is very comfortable. The AW10 has a more traditional numbered black dial with a three-hand arrangement, while the AW50 is further streamlined with a textured grey finish, 
and no second markers whatsoever. Another difference between the two is the lug shape. The AW10 has small bolt straight lugs, resulting in a mere 40.4 millimeter lug to lug length. The AW50 meanwhile has longer lugs that stretch to 44.3 mil, though these do have a sharp taper, allowing the watch to conform to the curvature of your wrist. There's also the AW10 Evo, a variant of the AW10 that houses the angled lug style of the AW50. The Evo is probably the best looking of all Braun models and is also available in a contemporary or black color scheme. So that one also might be worth a look at. While these are sexier than most fashion watches at the same price, I'd still be tempted to wait till they're on sale given the underwhelming build quality, as well as the finishing, it's nothing super impressive. Now to Timex. Timex seems to be a mainstay of these minimalist watch roundups, primarily due to their affordable and stylish Fairfield dress watch. While a viable alternative to most fashion watches in years gone by, the eventual steady progress of fashion brands in the face of online ridicule has meant that these aren't quite as tempting as they once were. They still look great, they come in two sizes, as well as in sub-second and chronograph variants, both of which do have quieter ticks. They each have class-leading Indiglo backlights too, making low-light situations a non-issue. Still, like the standard Weekender range, the Fairfield is only constructed of chromed brass. Admittedly, its application here looks and feels better than the cheaply done steel cases on the likes of Movement and DW. However, in the long run, it will be more susceptible to corrosion. Fortunately, Timex have been making moves themselves, evident from the release of the Fairfield spiritual successor, the Midtown. This piece is more vanilla on the surface with a fairly traditional setup from square on. However, as you rotate the Midtown, you'll notice that the dial is curved upwards at the edges with owl markers cut into the surface, a quirky extra dimension that really sets this piece apart. Aside from the added experimentation, upgrades over the Fairfield include a fully stainless steel case with a mix of finishing styles on the flanks and a water resistance bump up to 50 meters. While the Midtown has been executed to a higher standard than its predecessor, it's not the slimmest watch on this list and 9.5 millimeters. It also lacks the handy Indiglo function, which is disappointing though not entirely unexpected for a watch of this dressier style. The standard version is a versatile 38mm, while the chronograph version is 40mm. These are better quality than the Braun watches, though they are usually slightly more expensive too. As with other Timex watches, you can say by shopping with third parties, or by using discount codes on the Timex website, which at this point seem to be available on a daily basis. Just sign up to their newsletter if you need to. A standout watch that makes for a great alternative to the absurdly priced DW Automatic is the Timex Galley S1. I reviewed this distinctive piece about a year ago and I absolutely loved it, aside from one glaring issue. The unit they shipped me initially had an incorrectly cut bezel release notch. Basically, there was a hole that was much bigger than it was supposed to be. Eventually, they did send me a replacement, though the process to get there was frustrating. Timex's new head of customer service has made assurances that they're reorganizing the whole customer service department, or should I say they're reorganizing their procedures to make sure this sort of thing doesn't happen. Despite the issues I encountered, I'd honestly say I think the galley is probably still worth a punt. It really is an impressive offering and easily the most beautiful Timex watch, possibly the best looking piece I've covered on this channel, full stop. The dial has a gorgeous sunburst, but the injection molded steel case is the star of the show. The brainchild of famous designer and Timex creative chief, Giorgio Galli, it's nothing short of a work of art. There are alternating surface finishes and a chamfered high polish lining on the cutaway side portions. You won't find a case like this anywhere else. It's stunning from just about every angle. This kind of luxury feel is evident elsewhere too. It's got a domed sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating, a mirror-like rehort that provides beautiful reflections of the dial, and a cutaway minute track that reveals a brighter surface beneath. The dial has a minuscule amount of text, remaining undeniably sleek despite the faceted indices, and synthetic ruby at the lower center. Sportier hints like the substantial brushing, rubber strap, and thicker bezel make this more versatile than other options on the list, easily suiting both formal and casual scenarios with a quick strap change. The strap itself is very unusual. It's got an exclusive rivet keeper system that secures the strap in this central groove ensuring it doesn't flap around. It also features a flatter, rectangular quick-release system that's easier to operate and unnoticeable when fitted. Originally released as a standalone 41mm watch back in 2019, they added the 38mm version that I reviewed in 2022, meaning you now have a couple more options to pick from. Unlike DW, Timex didn't cheapen out with the movement. No, they used the improved Miyota 9039 in the Galley S1, which avoids some of the infamous design flaws of the lower tier 8000 series. It's got a much smoother sweep and good decoration, 
Though the rotor is still a little noisy, as it's been cut down substantially due to customization, resulting in a faster spinning speed. Still, there's simply no contest between this and the DW Automatic, despite them retailing for a similar amount. I would still own and wear this one today if I'd opted for a more subdued color, as the green model looked good in the video thumbnail, but it didn't really suit my wardrobe in hindsight. While Casio isn't known to be particularly fashion forward, outside of some of their hipster retro digital models, they surprisingly have several minimalist watches with very clean visuals. The MTP VT-01L is very much Casio's version of a fashion watch, but usually for far less money. It features the same materials, an identical movement, and a comparable design. It's nothing special, but if you're after a DW alternative for far less, then this could easily be the way to go. It's available in multiple colors, is normally available for around half the price, and does the job without leaving you feeling hosed. One model that could be worth considering is the new Casio MTS-110L. Not to be confused with the similarly named MTS-100L or MTP-S110, both of which I've previously covered on Ben's Watch Club. Okay, yeah, the naming scheme, it is pretty brain dead. Nevertheless, the newer 110 is a watch that I've had my eyes on for some time. It's got a sleek design and great specs for the money though until recently, it was only available in far-flung locations where the high shipping costs soured the deal. Availability does seem to be slowly improving, which is great considering how much this watch offers for usually around 60 US dollars. It's slim at 8.8 millimeters, is entirely constructed of stainless steel, has a better conforming shape than the Quartz DW, and the sunburst style on the gray version is shockingly better than the plain boring one on the near $500 iconic automatic from Daniel Wellington. Water resistance is reasonable, and the stock bands and bracelets are a minor step up over most fashion watches. Though, the crystal is where the MTS-110L crushes the competition. This low-cost watch uses a sapphire crystal, which provides unbeatable scratch protection, as was evident in our scratch test video. Sapphire is normally only used in more expensive watches, as most brands claim it's too costly to use, though Casio has never been a brand to under-deliver. It also boasts a 10-year battery life between changes, which is printed right there on the dial. Admittedly, this information could have been relegated to the rear to streamline the appearance, though I suppose it does make the upper and lower parts more symmetrical, and it's still a tiny nitpick considering the many things this watch accomplishes. The MTS-110L comes in at 38.8mm wide with a 45.9mm look to look, in addition to the previously mentioned thickness. I definitely prefer that grey version, though there are a couple of other options available too. Whichever you choose, it's a little known gem. A bit like this next one perhaps. Probably the cheapest automatic watch you can buy comes by way of AliExpress brand Parnis. Yes, YouTube, I said Parnis, P. A-R-N-I-S, not P. This brand's been around since 2005 and mainly makes homage watches, or clones of famous watch designs, essentially. You can learn more about those in our recent video on the subject. Curiously, they do have a handful of more original designs. The PA2123 is one such example. This is a stainless steel watch with a domed mineral crystal, a Nomos-inspired design, and an automatic seagull movement for Casio rivaling prices. Honestly, I don't know how they've accomplished this, outside of questionable labor practices, perhaps, as this piece has no right being this cheap. While the majority of the dial is printed, the subdial still has an engraved texture, and the case has polishing that rivals others at twice the cost. The whole thing has a quality, weighty feel, aided by the automatic movement. As you might expect, this movement is nothing revolutionary. This is apparently a Seagull 1731, which I've never heard of before, and for which I could find absolutely no information about online. I'm inclined to believe it is a genuine seagull movement, as the finish in here far exceeds that of the cheap Tongji movements that usually reside in most low-end Chinese automatics. Unbelievably, not only is this automatic, but it actually has a decorated rotor and support plate, unlike the bare-bones $500 Daniel Wellington, which was also made in China. This watch, though, cost me $60. 60. What I can tell you about this movement is, unfortunately, it doesn't hack, but it is hand windable and it does have a quick set date, meaning it's probably better than some commonly encountered Miyota 8000 series options, especially as it's slightly quieter too. This unit clocked in between minus 13 and minus 15 seconds per day, which is fine and probably within spec for this mysterious machine. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments. Another ridiculous feat Parnas has pulled off is the strap. How a band this good is present on a watch at this price, I will never know. While it lacks quick release tabs, so you will need a tool to replace it, chances are you won't want to change it out anyway. The quality is outrageous. It's thick yet supple, features a lovely graining, 
and has an impressive steel buckle that looks like it's been dropped in from a $500 watch. This strap will last well, I've got no doubt about that, and it probably could command the retail price of the whole watch if sold separately. I'll link the exact store I purchased this one in the video description, as sometimes different sellers supply these watches with different straps, and obviously I want you to try and get the best one, because believe me, you want this one. The Parnis is 41mm across, with a lug to lug of 48.5mm, and a thickness of 12.6mm, including the domed crystal, which is pretty thin for an automatic watch. It comes in a few colours and numbered variants that do look even more like a Nomos, though I like how this version does look a tad different. I've been meaning to look at this one for a while and I'm glad I finally got my hands on it. If you're after even more flashiness, then the Nixon Time Teller could be worth a punt, especially if you're on a tight budget. While this is a fashion watch through and through with mediocre build quality and average finishing at best, it is well priced and comes in a huge range of colour combinations, most of which have lively sunbursts which add interest to the simplistic design. It's also nicely sized at 37.5mm in diameter, meaning it fits the average wrist better than most fashion watches, which usually exceed 41mm. Oddly, the Nixon has a very respectable 100m water resistance rating, meaning it will cope quite well when submerged, so if you need a watch that you want to jump into the pool with, this could actually be a viable option. If you're after a sportier fashion piece, you could do a lot worse than this. Orient is widely considered to be one of the premier affordable watch brands, and for good reason. This Japanese manufacturer is a subsidiary of the Seiko Group, making it a sister to industry giant Seiko's wristwatch division. Orient tends to focus entirely on the mid to lower end of the market, and they do a damn good job with various impressive offerings that typically include in-house movements. While they have some, Interesting options, shall we say. Their repertoire also includes sleeker pieces that easily displace the likes of Daniel Wellington or Movement. First up is the much loved Bambino. This dress watch doesn't look like it commands its moderate retail price. It looks like it should exceed it. There are numerous versions of this bestseller available but a couple of variants are seemingly made for this video. The one nicknamed the Bauhaus one is the version 3 or V3, which has a design clearly pulled from real German Bauhaus pieces like the Junghund's Max Bill, evident from the similarly slim markers and domed crystal. This model is 40.5 millimeters wide and has a thin profile when excluding the boxy crystal. It's best suited for average to large wrists and comes in a selection of classy restrained colors that should go with most formal wear. Within is the Orient Caliber F6724 automatic. Indeed, despite costing the same as many rudimentary quartz watches, this Orient comes with a fully mechanical movement and a fairly decent one at that. When I recently tested the movement of one of these newer Bambinos, I found it was one of the most accurate ones I'd ever tested. Water resistance is low and the strap is mediocre, though the sunburst dials, elegant shape and weight help it supersede its price tag nonetheless. If you've got smaller arms then the recently released 30 8mm version is probably the perfect choice instead. The overall look here isn't quite so minimalist with a different handset and slightly more shapely markers, but it's still clean and arguably better proportion than the larger model. For a retail price of between about $100 and $200 at the time of writing, these are excellent choices if you're after a dressier piece, though I wouldn't say they're the most versatile on this list. They also do a quartz version of the Bambino, which is available for slightly less and could be a good option if cheap enough. I'll also link that one below. A closer match to Daniel Wellington comes in the form of the Orient Maestro. This is newer than the Bambino and has clearly been styled for a younger audience. Admittedly, it lacks some of the Bambino model's personality and distinctiveness, but it gives a cleaner, contemporary, DW-like appearance, but with more finesse. Quartz and automatic versions of this watch are available in a limited selection of colours, both are priced far better than their fashion watch counterparts, while providing improved finishing and, in the case of the mechanical watch, an in-house movement. One good thing about the quartz version which I have is that it utilizes a small second hand, positioned in a sub-dial at the bottom center. This means alignment is far less of an issue than with traditional extended second hands that are more prone to misalignment, or at least misalignment that you're more likely to notice. They also do a minimalist chronograph that's like an improved version of that offered in the Timex Fairfield range, which could also be worth a look if it floats you about. I'd take one of them over a Vincero any day. German brand Sternglass is another I've recommended before on Ben's Watch Club. Their whole brand is oriented around Bauhaus design, so they have a huge range of stylish options to pick from. To tell you the truth, 
Some of them are overpriced in my opinion. I didn't see the value in the Swiss made Canton that I reviewed back in 2020. It looked okay, but was far too basic to justify the exorbitant cost. Luckily, there are some alternatives that make more sense. The Naus, for instance, is a comparable watch to the Canton for half the cost. It has a nuanced design that avoids looking as generic as other pieces on this list, with a minute track position closer to the center and hour markers protruding outwards. This watch won an industry forum design award in 2020. And to be honest, when you look at it, it's no surprise. Its face is undoubtedly very well proportioned, a bit similar to some Jungen's models, which are also entirely printed, yet much more expensive. While well constructed, the dial is still rather plain, and the Mios 8000 series movement inside is far from impressive for the price. The case on this automatic one is also a bit bulbous for thinner arms. Since my initial review, the automatic Naos has increased in price, making it less tempting. It also makes the quartz option perhaps the obvious choice. That one is far thinner, with a case height of just 6mm. It also has a decent Ronda quartz movement, superior to the cheap Miyota quartz movements in most fashion watches. What's more, the quartz version was recently released in a rainbow of alternate colors, allowing you to cherry pick your favorite tone. Whereas this automatic, you only get a couple of options. Whichever now as you pick, they've both got sapphire crystals and five bar water resistance. They're also each 38 millimeters wide, though, as I mentioned before, the reduced thickness of the quartz one makes it wear smaller. All stone glass watches come with smooth German leather straps that are honestly outstandingly good. With a plush soft feeling and user-friendly quick release tabs, these are top tier. I'm yet to try the bracelet models, but I wouldn't shy away from the leather options if you have the choice. I want to also note here, I've also tried another one of their models called the Terro. You'll see a photo of it on my website, even though it never made it to the channel. It's essentially a limited edition version of the Quartz Naus, just with some minor cosmetic differences. For the right price, it might make for a good alternative. Nevertheless, for me, the best automatic stern glass is clearly the Aesthet, or As Aesthet, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Yeah, this one is comparably priced to the Naros, but is way thinner. It's a remarkable 10.8 millimeters, including the domed crystal, with a case height of only 8.5 millimeters. Those dimensions are comparable to most quartz watches, which is an excellent achievement for a non-luxury watch brand. Inside is also the improved Miyota 9015 which is superior to the 8000 module in the Naos and the DW Automatic. It's got a higher beat rate and consequently a much smoother sweeping second hand. This unit is also quieter than the similar Miyota inside the Timex Galley, possibly due to the more standardized rotor this time, though it's not viewable this time as the Ace that uses a sealed rear. While the dial is again only printed, it's got a concave shape, a little like the Timex Midtown mentioned earlier, mirroring the curvature of the lower half of the case. It almost looks like the housing is cradling the dial within it. It's been very carefully and precisely executed, and I really like it. The steel structure is neatly contoured, and while I like the sandblasting, which increases its versatility, similar results can be seen on other watches that retail for far less. It doesn't seem like a particularly complicated process. As with other stern glass watches, I'd make sure you hang on for discount codes, which seem to be available semi-regularly. There's also an ongoing 5% newsletter sign-up discount, which is worth using as well, though I'm unsure if discounts stack. Many of their watches are now available via other retailers like Watch Shop as well, meaning they could be cheaper elsewhere. Either way, I like the styling and the fact that they look quite different. Another German brand with even firmer ties to Bauhaus minimalism is Junkers. The founder of the Junkers aircraft company, Designer Hugo Junkers worked closely with Bauhaus director Walter Gropius on a range of other non-military products, some of which were used in the Bauhaus building in Dessau itself. Nearly 100 years later, Watches under the Junkers banner are produced by family-run German manufacturer Point Tech. Their designs, along with those produced under the Bauhaus sub-brand, which I'll mention in a moment, are visually akin to those produced by fellow German company Junghans, but for significantly less money. Junkers watches are also sold under the brand name Iron Annie in some regions like the UK. It is a peculiar name, though the watches ooze timelessness and look great for the money. The most economical options are those under the 100-year Bauhaus collection, just like the one I reviewed back in early 2020. That came with a vintage style domed acrylic crystal, a sunburst champagne dial, and a slim steel case, all for an affordable price. The leather strap was serviceable, the water resistance was better than expected at 5 ATM, and while the case finishing was simple, it was still compelling enough to overall receive a recommendation from me. They've since revised this model, and I now think it looks much better. With the raised set of numbers, that adds some much needed depth to the printed dial. I'd certainly shop around if you're considering this brand. They currently retail for far less on sites like Watchshop than the likes of Amazon, for example, though that again may change. If you're interested in Junkers, they have other minimalist options in the Dessau series. Now, I suspect these may have been 
discontinued, but they provide a more extreme minimalist look and sapphire crystals too. Some pieces in that collection look just like a clone of the Nomos Tangente, but without a small second complication. I'll link whatever I can find below, but you might struggle with that one. One you won't struggle with is their newer Bauhaus brand, which seems to be recently released. This is also produced by Point Tech and is basically a Junker sub brand from what I can gather on the website, forgoing the aviation style models in favor of exclusively minimalist ones. Okay, I haven't technically tried these yet, but they appear to offer identical quality to the Junkers watches I've already looked at, and they are built by the same company. Think of these as additional options with a brand name that sounds better in English. A wide range of both quartz and automatic options are already available in this newly conceived series. Personally, I'm glad they've done this, and I look forward to trying them at some point now that this bugbear has been eliminated. In a similar vein, there's the great quality, but equally bizarrely named Seagull Watch Company. I covered this brand recently when analyzing their astoundingly good 1963 chronograph, which is probably the best value chronograph money can buy. For barely anything, you get one hell of a watch. While the 1963 is their best known piece in the West, this watchmaking juggernaut has an extensive back catalog of other watches, including an insane number of Bauhaus inspired minimalist pieces. Now, some of them, are unsightly, no doubt. Nevertheless, their sheer frequency means multiple options still hit all the right notes. I didn't know what to make of their Nomos lookalike at first. At a glance, the polished case, thin snapback rear, and simplistic dial echoed the likes of Daniel Wellington. The strap too is disconcertingly plasticky. It looked a bit like a standard battery powered piece. You shouldn't jump to conclusions like I did though. You see, this seagull has got some tricks up its sleeve seagulls wear any clothes. For less than most entry-level fashion watches, it not only houses a premium sapphire crystal, but even squeezes a mechanical movement into its wafer-thin housing, something I was unaware of when ordering. I'd assumed it was quartz given the thinness, so this is a welcome surprise. Impressively, the hand-wound movement here is much quieter than that in the famous 1963, which is also much appreciated, as that was the main downside of that other watch. All three of these Chinese watches are nicely proportioned, considering the movements they use. The other two contain exuberantly decorated Seagull automatics for only a marginal price and size increase. The Nomos lookalike is a mere 8.5 five millimeters tall, including the domed crystal, meaning it's really more like seven millimeters, undercutting most fashion watches. It really is a super slick watch. This watch is available in this configuration and a variant with additional numbers at nine and three, closer matching the Nomos Tangente aesthetic. Still, it's not an exact copy. With a less rounded profile and larger curved lugs, they do differentiate it somewhat. You can often get this model supplied with a mesh bracelet too. Unfortunately, you don't get a view of the movement this time. Out of the other two they sent across, the 6075 is the more familiar, with a vanilla design that brings little new to the table, but provides the stylish, minimalist appearance that many of you will be looking for. It's a bit more complex than the previous Seagull, with applied markers, a textured subdial, and a mixture of case finishes, including brushed sides and a polished upper portion, though other elements like the dial surface and strap remain underwhelming. While it is quite thin at only 10.5 millimeters, I'd say the 40.3 millimeter diameter makes this a stretch for the very thinnest of arms. Although most of you watching should have no trouble with it. The rear on this and the other automatic are more functional than on the Hanwan model, with an exhibition window on each, as well as boosted 50 meter water resistance ratings. The other option, the Code 6100, that one's got a slightly different downsized glossy rear instead, as well as a more distinctive design language over Overall. It maintains the complication at the bottom center, but boasts a colored internal ring surrounded by an attractive bubble effect chapter ring that helps the watch stand out from its competitors. It kind of has this like hump surrounding the whole thing. It looks pretty unique. Its steel case comes in at a versatile 38.8 millimeter width with a lug-to-lug -lug of 48.2 mil and a thickness of 10 mil. Despite their length, the curvature of the lugs helps this model better conform to smaller wrists if necessary. Even I could probably just about get away with this one. As with the others, this is rocking a sapphire crystal and stainless steel construction. By default, it probably comes on the least rubbish strap out of the three, as well as an extra Zulu type band that you can switch it out for. This 6100 will be my pick of the bunch, though all make more sense than the outrageously priced DW Automatic that retails for triple the cost. Still can't get over that. Now we move on to some big hitters that you have probably heard of. A few years back, I recommended the very capable Seiko SNE 479. That one looked nothing like the vast majority of their repertoire. It not only had a super sleek design featuring a dark sunburst dial and an integrated bracelet, but it even boasted solar functionality. 
a feature not commonly found on this style of watch. Unfortunately, it seems that Seiko has since discontinued the SNE 479. I swear, they're like that Grim Reaper meme with the amount of watches they're culling. Yeah, that one has vanished from just about every online store available. The closest purchasable equivalent is the newer SNE 520 series, which could well be a spiritual successor to the previous model, given the similar design and codename. This one, only available in a few colors, carries over the similar Bauhaus style with slim markers, a near identical sunburst effect, and a minuscule amount of text. Admittedly, the 520 series lacks its forebearer's raw slickness with a slightly thicker bezel and more traditional looks. Though this means you can use the watch with either the included bracelet or third-party straps if you wish. Case finishing also sees an improvement over the 400 series with a larger assortment of finishing styles, including chamfered edges on the looks, making it look like a higher quality piece from a distance. You'll also notice the half frosted handset, akin to that on the highly praised and more expensive Orient Star automatic. Not only do these hands look great, but they simultaneously add some much needed legibility, especially to grey or black dials like this one. Other notable features include the well integrated dark date wheel and the raised chapter ring that curves up the sides taking the place of the rehort. And the good thing with those raised chapter rings is that when Seiko decides to drop in the indexes, they're less likely to misalign them. If that one doesn't float your boat or if you prefer mechanical watches instead, then I might have the perfect option for you. That being the Seiko Presage line. The newer 39.5 mm version I looked at back in October wipes the floor with the DW Automatic with a better movement and intricate dial surface that exudes quality. Compared to the prominent beams showcased on the older Cocktail Time models, this particular selection gives a more understated look due to the subtler, smaller ridges, enhancing the watch's versatility. Especially the blue version I looked at, it really has a nice pop to it, without looking domineering. The hands and many of the owl markers have also been trimmed down, giving a more contemporary minimalist appearance. As mentioned previously, the case finishing isn't the best, and the bracelet, while reasonable, lacks micro adjustments due to the butterfly deployment mechanism. While the tall box crystal also adds a touch of class, it is only mineral, which is poor for the price. Still, the aesthetic is what's most important here with this list, right? And boy, does the Presage offer up one of the most impressive dials for the money. This next one doesn't look half bad either. A widely known alternative to Daniel Wellington is the Tissot Everytime range. Many of these Swiss watches look near identical to the former, with a run-of-the-mill minimalist arrangement that usually involves a plain black or white dial. They even do an automatic version, the Everytime Swissmatic, which is much the same, just with a unique movement drawn from the quirky Swatch System 51, with an impressive 80-hour power reserve. Thanks to Watch Shop, I've managed to get my hands on one of the newer iterations, which is certainly more unique. This green option has a beautiful dial that gradually fades towards the edges creating an eye-catching look that might actually get you genuine compliments. Not the fake compliments you see dished out for garbage fashion watches in their paid advertisements. The handset is slightly different on this variant, though the rest of the watch has a very similar shape to the hyped up fashion watches, with a slim 7.2mm thickness, 40mm diameter, and 46.8mm look to lug length. Build quality here is better than the bargain bucket Chinese watches, though undoubtedly, some of your money is going toward the Swiss made tax rather than a substantial upgrade in finishing. For that reason, I'm not a huge proponent of Swiss made brands. And then you've got the whole debate about what makes a Swiss made watch, some of them using parts from China anyway. Nevertheless, versus the wholly Chinese made options, you'll usually get superior quality control as well as a higher resale value due to the prestigious name and heritage. Another improvement is in the band department. This Tissot has an impressive Milanese bracelet with handy quick release tabs and a brushed double fold over clasp, ensuring the watch doesn't unexpectedly take a trip off your wrist. This is much more usable than that supplied with most other watches, where the minimal viable product tends to be the norm. I'll link several versions of the every time down below so you can scout them out at your leisure. If there's a watch brand I didn't expect to see on this list, it'd be Citizen. Like Seiko, Citizen is a very traditional watchmaker normally prioritizing function over form, with technology like EcoDrive and Radio Control featuring at the forefront of their collection. Surprisingly, I managed to hunt down a Space Age Citizen that's a phenomenal option for anyone after a sexy, versatile watch. Nicknamed the Axiom, the new bm 7580 is one of the more unique timepieces on this list, with a futuristic design that includes a well-integrated bracelet and dynamic hooded looks. This curvature is complemented by the domed glass, which provides a smooth, flowing silhouette from a side on perspective. Incredibly satisfying for those of you with OCD. This angle also exposes just how skinny this watch is, 
at only 9.2 millimeters with the crystal and 7.2 mil without it. Like some of the other options on this list, this one is very flat to the arm during usage. While the final links may lack in terms of flexibility, if this Axiom fits me, it's almost certainly gonna fit you. While most aspects of the face are reminiscent of other standard offerings, it does have a vibrant bright blue sunburst for a fresh modern look. As you can see from the EcoDrive text at the bottom center, this one also boasts solar technology meaning you'll never have to worry about battery changes. It really is one of the cleanest options you can get, and it looks killer on wrist. Now you'll notice in some of the really close up macro footage of this watch, you can kind of see the outline of what looks like a cell beneath. Now you can't actually see this to the naked eye, that's only because of a polarizer that I use with my camera to kind of block some of the reflections coming from studio lights. It allows me to kind of see straight through the dial with this one, but yeah, in person, you can't see that. Given the lack of social media content about this watch, it seems no one's caught onto it yet, so it could be a pretty exclusive option if you can get your hands on it. The Achilles heel here is the mineral glass at a price point where Sapphire really should be standard. The dome looks fantastic, but it will be more susceptible to scratches than it probably should be. Also, the bracelet, while aesthetically awesome, completely lacks micro adjustment holes. The links are quite small, but adding or removing them may still not yield the perfect fit. I've also got some honorable mentions that didn't quite make the list for one reason or another. Possibly the thinnest, lightest watches purchasable for under $200, the Rotary Ultra Slim range offers timepieces that are under 6mm in thickness. Rotary sent me one of these a while back, but I ultimately ended up returning it to it. I've decided that when possible, I'm going to try and source watches from retailers rather than directly from brands when I can help it to reduce potential bias. The watch was alright with moderate finishing, and the dial was quite nice, especially with some of the added texture that they've got. That said, likely due to the flatness, it was very lightweight and felt quite fragile in the hands. Additionally, the pieces available were all quite dressy really, much more so than the likes of your movement or DW, and those vintage design cues, it didn't really make them a great fit for the list. If you like the classic traditional styling, there could still be a way to go, especially if you're after something as thin as possible. Another option is the Citizen, I think it's called the Stiletto range. Those ones are incredibly thin, they're just a bit tricky to get hold of for decent prices in the UK. I'm trying to keep this list as affordable as possible, comparable to some of those fashion watches. The popular Seiko SRPH80 series may not have received much fanfare on social media, however you will find this Seiko in almost every jeweler's window it seems. It's also one of the watches with the highest review counts on Amazon, so a lot of people are clearly buying this one. Again, this one isn't a perfect stylistic match to most fashion watches, with a slightly chunkier bezel and handset. I thought it was still at least worth mentioning anyway, as it's a great looking watch, and it's only got a couple of lines of text and fairly small markers, leaving a clean aesthetic. It's also got some unexpected assets like a half frosted effect on both of the larger hands, which you normally only find on much more expensive watches. The green version I have have oozes a chic dark green flare in the right lighting conditions, making for an elegant dress piece that would look equally at home on a formal leather band. As far as bracelets go, the stock option is half decent, and it's better than most Seiko 5s, though there are only two micro adjustment holes, which is a little disappointing. One of the real pros of this piece is the price. Possibly due to that lack of online fanfare, this one is currently far more affordable than the Presage range, despite not being far off in terms of finishing and performance. It's got a 4R35B movement, which is reasonable for the money with a solid 10 bar water resistance rating on top, higher than you'll ever need for this style of timepiece. The quartz version of this watch seems to be the SUR390 series. This one is similar to its automatic counterpart in many ways, despite the quite different code name. If anything, it's arguably a better fit for this list, thanks to the slimmed handset, bezel, and markers, which combine to make the SUR feel like more of a Daniel Wellington killer. Like the former, this one has Hardlex crystal, which is better than standard mineral glass, but not close to sapphire in terms of scratch resistance. The bracelet and finishing are all the same as the SRPH, though there is a small downgrade to 5 bar water resistance. It also lacks that hand frosting. The reduction from 12 to 8.5 millimeters in thickness may make this a worthy trade-off. In my books, the only swatches worth buying are those in the steel-cased irony range. This has a huge variety of experimental watches to choose from. The skin range in particular offered some extremely thin quartz watches that made for perfect DW substitutes. Unfortunately, as you may have noticed by the past tense terminology, the skin flag that I reviewed a couple of years ago seems to have died of death. 
and it's a shame because that one was almost as thin as a piece of paper. As such, you may have to browse for one of their other 38mm skin models. The most similar is probably the optical white version that you can see here. These have a much better build quality than their cheap plastic models and retain some fan favourite features like the quick access battery hatch and a Swiss quartz movement. As with most of the Swatch watches, they've got their dodgy lugs. The finishing is very average, though the one I tested did have a splendid high polish rehort that caught the light in all the right ways. I'll link what I can find in the video description but based on what I've seen, I'd maybe recommend steering away from the official Swatch site as the prices are exorbitant compared to elsewhere. Another minimalist watch that you should definitely steer clear from is the one on screen now. Tap the video to find out exactly why and to prevent getting hosed.